Hello friends, I am Sham Tamankar. I welcome you to the audiovisual program of learning by MSBT called as MSBT Lead Learning at Your Doorsteps. Now we are going to deal with course outcome 2, unit outcome 3, part B of the subject management code 22509. So unit outcome 3 part B deals with making material budget for the given production activities. What is the content or the agenda of this part? We will understand what is the meaning of material planning and budget, how to calculate your material purchase budget and we will try to understand it with the help of the real life example. And then we will look into the references. Now we have already seen this quote or I have explained this quote on the basis of your home budget and mind well the same idea applies to the business organization also. So the way you do your home budgeting similarly the business organizations will also have to do the budgeting on the same principles. So now understand what is the meaning of material planning or material budget. So direct material purchase budgeting refers to the procedure. So this is a procedure for preparing material or purchase budget. So that budget is in terms of quantity and also in terms of money value of materials to be procured in a specified time period. So whatever the materials you procure in a given time period, you have to express it in terms of the quantity and money value. Now this budget helps in estimating the material expenditure over a period of time. So you understand how much material is expended, expended over a period of time and it also helps to analyze the material requirement. The proper material budgeting is of the utmost importance because it adds up to the production cost. So if you do not budget properly or if you do improper budgeting, you will purchase the materials maybe which are not required or you purchase the material in unnecessary more quantity. Now it add up to the production cost, isn't it? So it add to the cost of the organization as it is added to the production cost. Now by budgeting, you can control these costs. Now direct material refers to the supplies needed for manufacturing goods and can also be regarded as raw materials, stores, stock and productive materials. When I say direct materials means generally these are the materials procured from outside. Now direct material purchase budget depends on the volume of the production. So very simple you can understand this. So you decide on the volume of the production and from that you can decide on the quantity to be purchased. So direct material purchase budget depends on the volumes of the production. And secondly and very importantly the material consumed therein based on per unit output. So there is always a unit of production maybe in numbers or in volume that is in liters or in weight that is in kg. Now consider you are producing a freeze or TV or washing machine. So you have to decide on how much materials of different type will go into the production of a single washing machine or a single TV or a single fridge. Now material budgeting ensure low risk of inventory planning. So there will be the low risk involved because you are doing the budgeting in a proper way. Then you get 
the highest purchase lead time so what is the meaning of lead time lead time is the time between when you place the order and you receive the order so ample of time is there for you to purchase the material because there is a good lead time available then there will be low transportation or the transaction costs because you need not buy haphazardly or frequently right and there will be better vendor relations because your vendor is rest assured about the the delivery schedule and from the assured delivery schedule he can have his own production schedule a assured production schedule and so the vendor will be happy and you will have the better vendor relations now how to calculate the direct material purchase budget so you will need the following information first is your production level we discussed that it depends on the volume of the production now this you can find from the production budget beginning direct material inventory there has to be a certain inventory at the start so you will find this in the production budget of the most recent period that was completed so whatever is the ending inventory of the previous period will be the beginning inventory of the subsequent period ending direct material inventory so we know that there is certain ending inventory you have to keep it why you have to keep it because this will ensure you have enough materials for the next production period so you can call it as a buffer inventory or safety stock from that you can find out the direct material that go into the production and you can find out the cost of the direct material from the prices of the materials at the prices you purchase those materials now we'll try to understand this with the help of a real life example so let's use the material budget for a small pottery business as our example now what is the background information the budgeted units of the pottery are to be produced in each of the following quarters are as follows that is quarter 1 1060 quarter 2 1260 quarter 3 1600 quarter 4 1800 now cost of the clay is rupees 3 per kg and the factory needs 1 kg of clay to produce the final piece so the quantity required is clear that is 1 kg per unit so that means if you want to produce 1060 unit you will need 1060 kg of the material and what is the price of the material or the cost of the material that is rupees 3 per kg now the policy of the pottery is to have 10% of the following quarter's production needs in ending inventory so this policy changes your material needs because this 10% ending inventory must be taken into account in the budget so very simply what will be the ending inventory of the first quarter it will be 1 to 6 because it is the 10% of the production quantity of the second quarter ending inventory of the second quarter will be 160 because the quantity to be produced in quarter 3 is 1600 and so on now the factory has 58 kg of clay on hand on january 1 so this budgeting is done for all the four quarters of that year from january 1st to december 31st and at the end of the year the desired ending inventory is 106 kg of clay very simple to understand because the production level of the first quarter is 1060 so 106 is the 10% of that now similarly we can find out the ending quantity from that calculation 10% so already we have discussed that that the ending quantity of the quarter 2 will be 160 and the ending inventory of the quarter 3 will be 190 
Now the following table is developed from two simple accounting equations. The first equation is raw materials required for production plus ending inventory is equal to the total raw material required. And second equation is total raw material required minus beginning raw material inventory is equal to raw materials to be purchased. So friends, it is very simple. It is simple formula like A plus B minus C is equal to D. So A is the starting quantity or the opening quantity. B is the purchased quantity. C is the ending quantity. And D is the quantity of consumption. Or you can do vice versa. So it is simple equation A plus B minus C is equal to D. Now this is a simple example. If a product is more complicated and needs a lot of different raw materials, this calculation would be massive as well as complex. But we are trying to understand the material budgeting with the help of a simple example. So how to create that table? So there is quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4 and a year. Unit produce, you know 1060, 1260, 1600, 1800, the total quantity is 5720. Now direct material required per unit, you know that it is 1 kg. So multiplied by 1, so the production needs are 1060 kg, 1260 kg, 1600 kg, 1800 kg. So total is 5720 kg. Now desired ending level is 10% of the next quarter. So for the end of the first quarter, it will, be, it will be 126 because the quantity produced in quarter 2 is 1260. It will be 160 ending quantity for quarter 2 because the quantity produced in quarter 3 is 1600. We already discussed that. So subsequently it will be 180 and 106. So the total quantity at the end will be 572 kgs. So the total need will be you add on 1600, 16060 to 126, it will be 1186, 1260 plus 160, 1420. So similarly, you add on to the quarter 3 and quarter 4. So at the end, it is 6292 kg for the year. Now we know the beginning inventory, it is given for the first quarter, it is 58 kg. Now for the second, third and fourth, you know 126, 160 and 180. Because the beginning quantity of the second quarter is the ending quantity of the first quarter and so on. So you have to minus it from the total needs by Doing the subtraction, you get 1128, 1290, 1620, 1726 and total 5768 kg. Now what is the cost of the clay? It is rupees 3 per kg. So what will be the purchase cost of the clay for each quarter? It will be rupees 3384 for first, 3882 for the second. 4860 for the third and 5178 for fourth. So for total year, you will require a clay of rupees 17304. So this is a way, this is a simple example from which you can understand how the material budgeting is done. So friends, we have learned about how to do the material budgeting and the references are learning manual by MSBTE and these are the two links which are shown over here. You can log on to these links and try to understand more about the material budgeting. So thank you friends. Thanks a lot for patient hearing and now we will meet in unit outcome 3 part c next time thank you thank you very much